In Season 1 of Extraordinarily Hard Games, we had Contra 3, Ninja Gaiden 3, and Double Dragon 3. So why not keep it going with Castlevania 3? This game is a real doozy. It starts off in classic Castlevania fashion. Dope tunes, whip upgrades, special weapons. It's tough, but manageable. A death here and there. Doesn't seem too bad. In fact, I'm having a pretty dang good time. One of the things that really separates this from the first game is that you get other characters to play as. I unlocked this little dude who can jump really high, climb on the walls, and even on the ceiling. And then I unlocked Alucard, who shoots projectiles. But most notably, he can turn into a bat, which is super rad because it lets you skip entire sections that would normally be a nightmare if you were using another character. But then, something happens. Suddenly, the good times are over. What happened? Why does the game send me so far back every time I die? Check out this level. I'll speed it up for you. Yeah, I had to do this like 15 times. For some reason, the game devs thought this was a good idea. They also decided that if you die in a room after this one, you should be sent all the way back and have to do the block room again. What were they thinking? This has to be one of the worst rooms in video game history. It's a slow auto-scroller made even slower. And you will play it again, 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 and again. This game has unlimited continues, which I guess is nice, but not really. You get two lives, and once you run out, you game over. Which just means that the game sends you even further back than it normally does. If you game over, you go back to the very beginning of a stage no matter what. If you are lucky enough to have a checkpoint anyways, which are few and far between. Despite that, Castlevania 3 is a good game, especially for its time. I mean, it's a Castlevania game. But still, this game can be such a piece of crap sometimes. The jump controls in this game are booty. If you've played a bunch of classic NES games, you might know what I mean about the movement in Castlevania. But if you don't, I'll try to explain it. Take a look at Mega Man 3. Really observe the jump mechanics. You can jump to the left or right, and if you need to make a small correction, like slightly turn back, you can. No problem. Try playing Mega Man 3 and then Castlevania 3. Look how stiff these controls are. Once you jump, you lose influence over your character until you hit the ground. If you jump straight up, you can't move left or right at all. If you jump forward, you can't turn back. It may not seem like a big deal at first, but trust me. Later in the game, when the stakes are high, enemies are everywhere, and there's actual platforming. The jumping makes it so freaking hard. Speaking of hard things, let's talk about possibly one of the worst aspects of the game. Can you guess what it is? Is it the awkward jumps? Is it game over sending you back? Is it the final boss? Nah. It is the stairs. Holy poop, the stairs. Something that you typically use just for going from one area to another but not in this game. In Castlevania 3, the stairs are a constant source of pain and frustration. One of the biggest problems with the stairs is that they are constantly in your way when you're trying to fight enemies. You often need to duck to dodge an enemy or block a projectile, but pushing down on the D-pad can cause you to get sucked into any nearby stairs, which leaves you super vulnerable. When you're on the stairs trying to fight enemies, you're often awkwardly turning back and forth, unable to jump and barely able to dodge any sort of attack. Even stranger, some characters like Alucard can't even attack when they're on the stairs, like what the heck is up with that? The last boss seems impossible at first. Dracula surrounds you in these fire pillars and then dominates you, it seems like there's nowhere you can even go. But he's actually pretty easy after you figure him out, especially if you use Alucard. The second phase is this weird face thing that floats around and pukes all over you, but once again, he's not too hard if you're careful and throw tons of axes. The final phase requires you to be patient and chuck axes at his face whenever it's safe. Dodge lasers, stay away from these platforms that float around and you'll take the son of a gun down. This game is tough to beat, but feels good when you do it. I also know there are other characters and different paths you can take. I'm not sure if those make the game any easier. This also really makes me want to play Symphony of the Night again. That game is so good. So this was an interesting video for me to do. So I made this video way back in 2018. It was originally intended to be the first episode of Season 2 of Extraordinarily Hard Games. However, I wasn't completely sure about the format. I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep doing 
the same format or if I wanted to do more of a review slash recap style format. So ultimately I never published it, but I thought it would be fun with the recent resurging of extraordinarily hard games on YouTube. I thought it would be really cool to bring this video back and just show you all uh, the video I never published. I think it would be fun to do more videos like this. If I do bring back that series, I don't know if it would be like this or if I would do the original format or something different. All I really do know is that I really enjoy playing these games. They're such a crazy journey. Such an amazing thing to, to work through these games, trying to beat them, and then when you finally beat them, looking back um, at everything you had to do to overcome them. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you have any thoughts, comments, or anything, be sure to let me know below. See you in the next video.